All right, Todd, we have a special guest today. Uh, one of our Football Nation contributors, he covers the Oregon Ducks for us. That's Alan K. Fox. Alan, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning, Alan. Now, just to set it up here, like Bill was just talking about, Alan is, in, is an outstanding writer for FootballNation.com. He's a, kind of our beat writer for Oregon. He has all sorts of credentials. He's on the field interviewing players, taking pictures, and he's our insider with everything that comes uh, with, with Oregon. And Oregon is one of the top college fantasy football hotbeds. It has been for years. So we have a few questions for you, my man. Number one. All right. You know, LaMichael James, the running back, is he going pro after this season? Well, you know, it's kind of hard to say. You know, he's a little guy, needs to put on a little weight. But uh, stat-wise, he's untouchable at, at times. But so far this season, you know, he's only averaging uh, four yards a carry. So if he gets the season turned around, I'd say, yeah, he could probably leave. It just really depends on the rest of the year and if he can stay healthy. Now, when he, if he goes, let's, let's assume that he's going to go pro and go for the riches of the NFL. Who's, who's the next guy? You know, DeAnthony Thomas is, is getting a lot of love this, this uh, fall. He's the true freshman out of Crenshaw, California. Is he next in line, or is it Kenyon Barner? Well, you know, normally I would say Kenyon going into the season, but the way DT's played this year, um, it's really hard to say. He's averaging eight, six carry, um, leads the team in uh, receiving yards. So, yeah, I think he's probably the guy. Now, is he? No, he's got a nickname, and I know Bill. Bill, our my co-host here, is all about the nicknames. Yeah, Anthony my uh, my uncle, my uncle Snoop Dogg, nicknamed him the Black Mamba. Yeah, is there any truth to that rumor? Is that did, I mean, the the rumor as I heard it here, Alan, is that the Anthony Thomas from again Crenshaw, his youth football coach was none other than Snoop Dogg, and then he that named him. True. Is it true? Give us the scoop. What's the story there? That's yeah, true. Back in 05, uh, Snoop started a Pop Warner League, and uh, he just happened to be on his team, and he was so fast. He called him the Black Mamba because the Black Mamba is the fastest snake in the world. Wow, and, he, and he's actually one of those guys that actually panned out. Now, didn't everyone thought he was going to USC. How did he wind up at Oregon? Well, you know, he, from what I understand and what I've read in reports is the fact that the, all the suspensions down there and all the uh, allegations with the Bush deal kind of pushed him away. And then the fact that he came to Oregon and the visit went so well. And uh, the uniforms, the uniforms date all the way back to uh, Jonathan Stewart. Stewart said that that's one of the reasons he came to Oregon. The uniforms, for real? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that's a big draw here. You got Nike, you know, Phil Knight supports wow. all, all the program. And it's, it's pretty intense up here. I've read a report that the players are no longer allowed to do that kind of O symbol with their gloves, otherwise they'll get penalized. Is that true? Um, that was true for about a day and a half, and then they, they recalled that. Oh. Um, now what they're saying is that you can't do it towards another player or the stu other student section. Right. Um, so away games should be somewhat interesting because, say you're at Arizona State or what have you, you can't really throw it to the crowd because then you're taunting. Yeah. Um, the other thing that they did this uh, – discontinued at Austin Stadium is these little duck lips that you blow through, kind of like a whistle, if you will. Something that's not even really that used um, that they recently this week said that's no longer to be used at Austin Stadium, which is kind of odd. <laughs> How about it? Now, Bill, going back to the Black Mamba for one second, from a college yeah. fantasy football angle, he doesn't get a lot of touches per game, but the interesting thing about him, in many commissioner services, he's listed as a wide receiver, okay? Even though he's playing more running back, they put him in the slot a little bit. So some savvy fantasy owners are starting DeAnthony Thomas as a wide receiver. I think actually one of our previous callers, Neil Young, was doing this. You know, and yeah. you're getting running back production at the wide receiver spot, which is always good. So that's a little twist to college fantasy football. You always got to pay attention to where, you know, what the position designation is for each of these players. Now, Alan, who yeah. is going, who's going to be the go-to wide receiver for the Ducks this year? Jeff Mail is gone. Josh Huff, we all thought he might be the guy. He seems to be banged up every week. Who can we look for from a college fantasy football standpoint to be the go-to wide receiver for Darren Thomas the rest of the year? Well, you know, entering the season, you definitely would have thought of either Josh Huff, um, but he's been out with an injury since uh, spring camp. And then you got Levasse Tune. But really, this year he's got 10 catches, only 72 yards, and one touchdown. Um, so if you go off pure receiving stats, it's 
the Black Mamba, if you will. He's leads all, like I said, all receivers in yards with 140. He leads an average with 17 and a half uh, reception and also two touchdowns. And another sleeper you may want to look out for is uh, the backup tight end, Colt Lyera. He was uh, recruited as a t- or linebacker and you know, overall athlete. He's only got one catch for 20 yards, uh, but it was a touchdown. And through spring, he was uh, outstanding. He left high school early, got graduated early, so he could come down here with Oregon and uh, get going. Well, that leads me to my final question for you, Alan. All right. Our show here is kind of a hybrid. We do college fantasy for the first hour. We do NFL fantasy for the second hour. If you took anybody on the roster, on the Oregon Duck roster, who translates the best into the NFL from a fantasy standpoint? Skill positions. Is it Michael James? Is it somebody else? Who are we going to see in the NFL in two or three years who's going to be a star? Yeah, that's tough. I'd like to say LaMichael. Um and just by the way he's played over the last two years coming into this season. So I'd say LaMichael because he can return kicks, punts, something that they're actually using him with, with the absence of Cliff Harris and Kenyon Barner. But once again, this kid, uh, Thomas, uh, he's really blown our mind. Like, Bilotti and Chip both, when I first interviewed them, when LaMichael came to campus, they said that he was something special. But from what I've seen at this stage in the career, other than the two fumbles against LSU, Anthony Thomas' steps leaps and miles ahead of where LaMichael James was when he came in. Wow. That's that's some big words there, Bill. The big black time proclamation. Mama. Woo. Yeah. Alan, hey, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Enjoy the Oregon Ducks as they blow out another opponent this week. And we'll read all your stuff on footballnation.com. Thanks, Alan. And I'll thank you for having me. Have a great day. Absolutely, and you know, uh, Alan's done a great job in getting some inside access for us and uh, bringing some good insight to the, to the website. So, good stuff there. The Black Mamba, baby. Got to-